Hello there, guys. Today, I am going to give you a little behind the scenes look at the latest project that I just wrapped up. So this was a week long project in LA for the most part. And um, what happened was I was contacted by the owner of Hatch, which is a very chic like maternity boutique in New York and they are expanding to LA. And so the owner had this vision um, based on this fabulous Moroccan space of these flamingos being painted on her wall in the space. And apparently she just Googled um, painted flamingos or watercolor flamingos online and ran into my work. And so thank you, Google, for this gig. So we went back and forth a little bit and decided that um, I was going to go ahead and do it. And so what I did was I painted these two um, sort of spec flamingos for her and I created a little diagram of the space and essentially we decided on the layout of the flamingos before I arrived. So the next thing I had to figure out was how was I going to transport my art supplies from Austin to LA and avoid buying all new ones when I arrived. So I took a little bit of a gamble. I did some research and apparently like some TSA people are cool with bringing acrylic paints and some aren't. I went ahead and I bought some like little cheap and cheerful brushes and um, that was super smart. These brushes were perfect. And then I also bought um, this cheapy palette. It was like six bucks um, just to kind of go ahead and use while I was there. Also a very smart move. And I just um, <laughs> took a trusty Ziploc bag and I popped everything in there and zipped it up and I was good to go. I put this in my carry-on and I was not hassled. So very happy about that. I arrived on location on Saturday at about 10 a.m. The shop was a work in progress and going to be finished within the next week. So the launch was like a week from when I was painting these, believe it or not. I was working in this um, pretty intimate apothecary room in the back and I have these two walls to work with. Now, the first thing I will note is the walls were supposed to be painted in matte but they were actually painted in gloss paint, a semi-gloss. And that was um, something that I definitely had to work around. You see matte um, texture will take the color and absorb it and gloss won't. Gloss essentially repels it. So um, I had to kind of change the painting plan a little bit around that. The first thing I did was sketch each bird lightly and loosely on the wall. And I got my client to approve these placements. And then we were good to start painting. So again, my supplies, the palette, this base color, um, which was so key that I had this base color in it and I didn't have to mix the pink every time and then the brushes that I was using for the birds. As you can see now, the walls are glossy. So the technique that I was using was essentially just getting an opaque base 
and then creating the volume and points of interest and details and stuff from this opaque base. Initially, I had wanted it to be a little bit more of a watercolor effect and we discussed that, but unfortunately with the glossy walls, it's just impossible to get looseness without it just looking like a streaky mess as you can kind of see there. And this is after layer one on the flamingos and now just moving right on to layer two. It just takes about two layers to get that nice opacity um, that you want to paint sort of the shadows and feathers and beak and all of that details over. And this is after layer two. I left some parts um, not quite opaque because they were getting a different, a shadow or a black treatment or something like that. And now that we are all pink, um, it is time to add the form to the bird. So the shadows and really bring them to life and stuff. And this calls for a lot of mixing. The thing about acrylics is that they dry up just so fast. So um, I I didn't mix that much of, of a color at once, which might have been a bit of a mistake, um, but I found myself just mixing all the time. So this is the space, this is around 3 p.m. day one, and this is flamingo number one, got some shadows blocking, and this is flamingo number two, and I'm going to get try to get as far as possible today. So tomorrow's maybe a little bit more chill. And here you can see I am in the midst of adding the shadows to flamingo number two. And I kind of devised this rubbing technique that, that sort of worked um, to create a bit of a, a gradient and an interesting like textural um, 3D-ish effect. Um, but it was tough with the gloss walls because if you rub too much, you actually just end up rubbing off the pink as well. And um, it's also interesting, you know, when you start to work with like a texture to see that texture kind of come through. So it was, it was definitely a challenge and sort of out of my normal, like easy breezy watercolor ways. <laughs> but I always like a challenge, so... So, having painted for quite some time and sort of being all alone here, I decided, you know, it was time to add some black just to like ground the flamingos a little bit. So that is what I'm doing. I'm adding the black, which kind of brings them to life in a way because I was just getting a little too, a little too crazy. But yes, these flamingos are getting some black. And hopefully <laughs> Jessica is getting some fresh perspective. And I think we've gotten over a major hump here, guys. Oof. Finally feel like I know who this fella is. And it's all because of the eyes and the beak. Honestly, it's always the most gratifying part.
of the process because it's the part that adds like the life force almost, you know, like the personality. And so, and here is where we landed for tonight. Flamingo number one. And we have Flamingo number two. And tomorrow I just need to do some sort of poppy details on these guys. And it is now tomorrow. Here is where we landed. It is always so good to look at things with a fresh perspective and to know when to actually put down the paintbrush. So I just had a little check-in with my client on FaceTime, which is really tough actually because I learned that you can't really see color and darkness and stuff that well on FaceTime. Um, but regardless, we decided that we want to lighten the birds up a little bit. So what I am doing here is I'm just adding layers. I imagine this is going to be a lot of layers of, of like sort of a really light um, watery coat of the light pink over the whole bird. And this should kind of create this like cloudy, billowy, feathery, light effect, um, which is the vibe that we want in this room. Yes, and as you can see, painting on walls is not the same as painting on watercolor paper or just any flat surface in general. Um, there, there is drippage to consider and um, there's posture to consider and all sorts of fun stuff. So it just adds another layer. And that's also why I wanted to do this project. It was a challenge. I really thought that my style wouldn't translate very well to walls like murals. And I kind of wanted to prove myself wrong. I'm gonna get some food. I have not eaten since like 9 a.m. Say goodnight, guys. So this project was a learning for me in a lot of ways, and I'm very glad that I did it. The store is launched, and it is so awesome to see like little kids on Instagram interacting with Flamingo Wall. That. That's just what it's all about for me. That brings me so much happiness to know that a little piece of my art is out there in LA, you know, in, in the world. It is awesome. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the behind the scenes of this flamingo wall and I will talk to you again soon. TTFN.